What if I told you that our solar system is being visited right now by an ancient messenger from another star? A mysterious celestial body is currently traversing our solar system, leaving astronomers with more questions than answers. In fact, did you know that in just four months, this single object generated nearly 100 scholarly articles? That's how baffling it is. We are unable to determine its precise nature or purpose, and it has already moved beyond our direct line of sight. For months, however, this object was under intense scrutiny. It has been designated 3-2, divided by Atlas, and classified as an interstellar comet. A significant body of knowledge has been amassed about this visitor from beyond our solar system. In a mere four months, close to 100 scholarly articles have been published on 3i divided by Atlas, supplementing a wealth of other information circulating outside of official channels. Some of these accounts may seem incredible. So our goal today is to sift through the speculation and present the essential facts you need to know about 3i divided by Atlas. Let's trace the path of this interstellar traveler. All right, so right now, 3i divided by Atlas is at its closest point to the Sun, a phase known as perihelion. This peak proximity occurs on October 29th, when the object will be approximately 210 million kilometers from our star. To help you better comprehend this immense distance, astronomers often use the astronomical unit, or AU, which represents the average distance between the Earth and the Sunday. The perihelion of 3.2 divided by Atlas is at 1.44 AU from the Sun, placing it just inside the orbit of Mars. This period of maximum solar exposure is logically when 3.2 divided by Atlas will be at its most active. The intense heat will cause a significant amount of material to be ejected from its surface into space. This process, which is known as sublimation, is characteristic of comets. It's the direct transition of a solid to a gas because a liquid state is impossible in the vacuum of space. Sublimation is what gives a comet its distinctive appearance with that hazy aura and a long tail. The aura, technically called the coma, is composed of gas and dust released from the object's solid core. The tail is formed by the solar wind, which is a continuous stream of radiation emanating from the Sunday. This celestial breeze pushes the lightest particles of gas and dust from the coma, creating a spectacular cosmic display. Regrettably, we are positioned on the wrong side of the sun to witness this event as 3i divided by Atlas reaches its peak activity. Our view of the perihelion is completely obstructed by the sun's glare. It's a frustrating piece of cosmic timing, isn't it? We have this incredible visitor and just as it's putting on its biggest show, the sun steps right in the way. This is a common challenge in astronomy where our line of sight is just as important as the power of our telescopes. While we await its re-emergence, Let's delve into the fascinating story of its arrival. Our tracking of 3i divided by Atlas began in July 2025. It was officially identified by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System Atlas, which is a global network of telescopes in locations such as Hawaii, Chile, and South Africa. Their mission is to scan the night sky for moving objects. On the night of July 1st, they detected just that another moving object. It was initially classified as a new asteroid, but then a peculiar detail emerged, its incredible speed. Now, to understand this, you've got to remember that everything in space is in perpetual motion, and every object in our solar system orbits the sun, bound by its gravitational pull. Our orbital velocity is what prevents us from succumbing to this gravitational force. The closer an object is to the sun, the faster it must travel to maintain its orbit. However, if an object moves fast enough, it can begin to escape the sun's gravity. At a certain velocity, it can break free entirely and venture into interstellar space, that vast emptiness between stars. This concept is called escape velocity, and it's the fundamental dividing line between things that belong to our solar system and things that are just passing through. Calculating this speed is one of the first things astronomers do with a new object. 
When astronomers calculated the velocity of this newly discovered object, they were astounded. It was the fastest moving object ever detected in our solar system. To put this into perspective, the Earth orbits the Sun at a speed of 30 km divided by s. Mercury, which is much closer to the Sun at 0.4 AU, must travel at approximately 48 km divided by s to maintain its orbit. The object discovered by Atlas was moving at 58 km per second, and at the time it was still far out, just inside Jupiter's orbit, about 4.5 AU from the Sunday. It was clear that at this velocity, the object was on a hyperbolic trajectory, meaning it would not be captured by the sun's gravity, but would instead pass by and continue its journey back into interstellar space. This confirmed that it had come from the void and would return to it after a brief tour of our solar system. This is when it was named 3i divided by Atlas signifying that it was the third interstellar object to be identified. You might be familiar with the first Oumuamua, which was also quite enigmatic, though in a different way than Atlas. The second, 2i divided by Borisov, was less remarkable, behaving much like a typical comet, aside from its interstellar origin. There are three key distinctions between 3 divided by Atlas and its predecessors. First is its size. It is considerably larger. Oumuamua was up to 400 meters across and Borisov was as wide as one kilometer. But three, I divided by Atlas, could be up to 5.6 kilometers in width. That's not just a rock, that's a mountain flying between the stars. Second is its velocity. Atlas travels at roughly double the speed of Oumuamua and Borisov. The third, and perhaps most perplexing, is its trajectory. Oumuamua and Borisov approach from the northern sky, which is the general direction in which our solar system is moving as it orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So, in a sense, we collided with them. 3i divided by Atlas, however, is not a head-on encounter. It is approaching from the side, almost perfectly aligned with the plane of the planets. Our solar system is a relatively flat disk of matter that formed around the Sunday. Over eons, this material coalesced into planets, moons, and asteroids. But it all remained within this flat plane, known as the plane of the ecliptic. There are a few exceptions, the most notable being Pluto, whose orbit is tilted at a 17 degree angle. This context highlights the remarkable alignment of 3i divided by Atlas, which is only 3 degrees off the ecliptic plane. Think about that. Space is three-dimensional. It could have come from anywhere above, below, any crazy angle. But instead, it slides into our system perfectly flat, almost like it's intentionally matching the path of our planets. The probability of such a side and approach from any random direction in three-dimensional space is incredibly low, making it a significant coincidence. This leads to an even more profound question. Where did 3i divided by Atlas originate? We know it came from the direction of the galactic core. If we visualize the Milky Way from a top-down perspective, our solar system is located in an outer spiral arm. The bright core in the center is densely packed with stars. To truly understand the origin of three divided by Atlas, we need to view the galaxy from the side. Like our solar system, most of the matter in the Milky Way is concentrated in a thin disk However, there is also a thick disk above and below this plane, a less crowded region where celestial objects can remain undisturbed for extended periods. It is from this ancient region of space that astronomers believe three I divided by Atlas hails, which could make it as old as 7.6 billion years, nearly twice the age of our own planet. This is a crucial piece of the puzzle. An object this old is a time capsule. It carries chemical and physical information from the very early days of our galaxy, a time before our sun even existed. Studying it isn't just astronomy, it's cosmic archaeology. While we may never be able to trace its journey back to its exact point of origin, astronomers have recently backtracked its path over 10 million years, identifying 93 stars it would have encountered. 
What is truly fascinating is that over this vast expanse of time, the closest it came to any of these other stars was a distance of 0.3 light years, which is 63,000 astronomical units. In stark contrast, it is currently just 1.4 AU away from our Sunday. Now, let's explore the approach of 3-2 divided by Atlas and what we have learned about it. Although officially discovered on July 1st, it was first spotted on May 7th, 2025, in images captured by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS. TESS, an observatory orbiting Earth, happened to be looking in the direction of 3i, divided by Atlas for about a month, providing us with an opportunity to track it as it moved through Jupiter's orbit. The first thing astronomers measured was the object's brightness and its changes over time, which can reveal information about its composition. In the month that TEST observed 3, I divided by Atlas, it travelled about 1 AU closer to the Sunday, therefore it was expected to get brighter. Astronomers use the term flux to describe the perceived brightness of a celestial object. The flux of 3, I, divided by Atlas, was expected to increase by a factor of 1.5 between May and June. But the data from tests showed that it actually increased by a factor of five. This massive increase in reflected light indicated that it was not an asteroid, but a comet beginning to form its coma of gas and dust. However, two aspects of this observation were unusual. The first relates to the polarization of light. In simple terms, when sunlight hits the cloud of gas and dust around 3, I divided by Atlas, it scatters in different directions. The direction of the scattering can tell us about the material it is hitting. Most objects in space, including the interstellar object 2, I divided by Borisov, exhibit mostly positive polarization. 3, I divided by Atlas, however, has a negative polarization and it is the most extreme negative polarization ever discovered. This is a genuine scientific mystery. It tells us that the dust grains in its coma are fundamentally different from almost anything we've ever seen, suggesting their composition or physical structure is completely alien to our local neighborhood. This suggests that not all solar systems are the same. What is considered normal here may be unusual elsewhere and vice versa. The second surprising thing about the coma of three I divided by Atlas was that it formed so early while the object was still beyond Jupiter's orbit, over five AU from the Sunday. At this distance, it is extremely cold and comets from our solar system are typically still frozen solid. The sublimation process that forms a coma usually begins between three and four AU. This is because comets in our solar system are primarily composed of water ice, which requires a significant amount of energy to melt. As our most powerful telescopes were pointed at three, I divided by Atlas, we learned that its coma was dominated by carbon dioxide gas. While it did contain some water vapor, the ratio of CO2 was much higher at about eight to one. This is the inverse of what we typically find in comets. Frozen CO2, or dry ice, sublimates at a much lower temperature than water ice, which explains why the coma of 3-2 divided by Atlas formed so early. This finding alone teaches us something valuable. The building blocks of planets and comets might be assembled very differently in other star systems. Perhaps in its home system, carbon dioxide was far more plentiful than water. As 3i divided by Atlas continued its approach to the Sun, we observed the ratio of CO2 and water begin to shift. By late September, as it passed through the orbit of Mars at just over 1.5 AU, the object began to release a massive amount of water vapor, equivalent to a fire hose at full blast. This was more water than would be expected, even from a typical comet at this distance. We had never witnessed such a sudden and abundant release of water vapor. The same can be said for the presence of metals in the coma. During the summer, astronomers detected a small amount of nickel in the surrounding cloud, but no iron. Nickel and iron are commonly found together in celestial objects because they are formed in the core of dying stars and then dispersed into space during supernova explosions. The absence of iron was puzzling. It's also unusual to see any metal sublimating at such a great distance from the Sunday. 
the massive release of CO2 was likely dragging nickel atoms along with it, but that still didn't explain the lack of iron. Just as with the water vapor, iron eventually made a sudden appearance in the coma. By late September, astronomers began to detect iron for the first time, and the ratio of nickel to iron quickly shifted to a more typical combination. So, while 3i divided by atlas is gradually becoming more normal, it is doing so in a very peculiar manner. The tail of 3i divided by atlas has also exhibited some unusual behavior. When we first observed a tail forming back in the summer, it was pointing in the wrong direction towards the Sunday. This is unexpected, as the tail is typically formed by the solar wind pushing material away from the Sunday. This could be related to the early formation of the coma due to the high CO2 concentration. Because the object began sublimating at such a great distance, the solar wind may not have been strong enough to push the cloud of gas and dust away. What we observed was likely an accumulation of this cloud on the warmer, sun-facing side of the object before it encountered a strong enough wind to form a conventional tail. By September, 3i divided by Atlas had developed a short, fan-shaped tail facing away from the sun, which is more typical. The length of a comet's tail varies depending on its composition and distance from the Sunday. For example, comet Hale-Bopp, observed in 1997, had a gigantic tail, but it was also much closer to the sun at about 0.9 AU. Around this time, we had our closest opportunity to observe 3i divided by Atlas, not from Earth, but from Mars. On October 3rd, the object passed within 0.19 AU of Mars, the closest it will come to any planet in our solar system. Fortunately, we have numerous cameras on and around the red planet. The Perseverance rover captured an image from the Martian surface, showing the object as a streak in the night sky. The European Space A's ExoMars probe in orbit around Mars provided a slightly clearer image, but still not enough to distinguish the bright coma from the object's surface. To get finer detail, we would need a photo from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has the most powerful telescope in the Martian system. However, due to a US government shutdown, it is uncertain if this image was taken or when it will be released. For now, we must wait, as the sun continues to block our view of 3i divided by Atlas until early December. At that point, we will be able to study the effects of the sun on the object, although our closest view will be from 1.8 AU on December 19th. By then, 3i divided by Atlas will be well on its way out of the solar system. There is one more close encounter to come. On March 16th, 2026, the object will fly within 0.36 AU of Jupiter. While we have fewer cameras around Jupiter, we do have one on the Juno probe, which will have an opportunity to capture one last image of three, I divided by Atlas before it disappears into the interstellar void. At that distance, the object will be cooling down and less active but its encounter with the sun may have changed it, providing us with a deeper understanding of these interstellar visitors. This is a key part of the mission, to see how this alien object reacts to the heat and radiation of our star. The changes we observe or fail to observe will tell us volumes about its composition and durability. It's possible that many of its strange characteristics are not from its place of origin, but are an accumulation of peculiarities picked up along its incredible journey. For now, we can only speculate, but more answers, and likely more questions, are on the horizon.